And welcome everybody here on Twitch Chats and everybody on YouTube for the return of Gruul Henge. Um, kind of my favorite Gruul deck to play in Standard right now. It's different from your normal Gruul deck where normally your Gruul decks are all about aggression, trying to curve out and just go fast and beat down the opponent before they can stabilize. You know, have your Questing Beast, Ember Cleave, stuff like that, and, and just really um, have your, you have like your, your A plan if you're or your plan a if your plan a uh works you know you're going to be winning you're smashing your opponent but whenever your plan a doesn't work if you kind of like mulligan have a have a draw that's not so good you stumble or if the opponent has a good draw that slows you down it's pretty tough to win with gruel and so what we're doing here is we're trying to just go bigger and be able to play a longer game you know use the great henge to be able to give us a lot of card advantage have some bigger cards like cavalier of thorns that's just a, a good generic card that uh, helps us play a longer game as well. Um, the So basically, um, we're, I'm making some changes since the last time that we played this deck. The main thing is, last time whenever we were playing it, I had all the Bone Crusher Giants in the sideboard, and I was just bringing them in a lot. And so I've kind of kind of cleaned the deck up and put all the Bone Crusher Giants here in the main deck for us where um, where they're just kind of good against everything. You know, it's, and it's a good large creature also for turning on the Great Henge as well. There's us some more interaction in the main deck. I also have a second Vivian because we were struggling like with the trample part of like getting the getting some damage through. So getting a second Vivian in here to give these Cavalier Thorns trample, but then also being some more removal. But then be, to be able to fit those in, now I'm not playing the Bronzodons or the Sundering Shaman that I had before in the main deck. And Sundering Shaman's a card that I, I really regret not having in the main deck. It just seems good against everything. You know, four mana, five, five is, you know, it, it can get chump blocked a lot, which was, which is kind of a problem. But if it deals damage to them, like basically everybody's got artifacts and enchantments to destroy and you can kind of destroy artifacts and enchantments over and over. So I have one in the sideboard and it's good against aggro also. It's just a, a five, five that's good against aggro. You know, like that's a good blocker. But but to, to be able to fit the second Vivian and the Bone Crushers in, we had to get rid of it. I also had to get rid of a Ravager Worm also and a, and a Cavalier. We had four Cavaliers, one Ravager Worm. Um, but you know, like that's you know, this was six slots that we had to free up for those. Um, anyway, the with the Bone Crushers leaving the sideboard, it gave us room for shifting Ceratops. As we talked about with the Improbable Alliance deck, there's a ton of counter spells everywhere, and so having shifting Ceratops and a Chandra's going six can't be countered spells. I'm excited about that in the sideboard. Um, so there we go. Uh, like our, our Domri's Domri also says can't be countered with a plus one whenever it adds mana. This thing can whoa. This thing can give our, our creatures haste. You know, it can give like the Cavalier of Thorns haste, for example, or can also dig for some more creatures. And both of these, you know, we have like the seven two mana mana creatures. We have the four um, planeswalkers that add mana. They can help ramp us to the Great Henge also to take over in the late game. So let's see how it does. Here we go. <clears throat> he made it to mythic with an uh, made it to mythic with an insane win rate playing up mono green when Veil vale was legal. Poor Veil vale of Summer. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of ranked. Uh, recently, and so just kind of feel like doing some some uh, some leagues here. Oh, I guess I did have a I did have it labeled as ranked. Whoops. Well, I'm in a league, so change that. Rawr. <clears throat> yeah, Growth Chamber Guardian could be pretty good in this deck. It just can't really fit it in. I think the mana creatures are are important. But obviously Growth Chamber Guardian with the Great Henge is an amazing engine. But the Great Henge with just any creatures is usually good. Anyway.
Speaking of the Great Henge, this would be a very nice time to draw it. Or Domri's Ambush. That's a good draw, too. I'll take four to give myself the ability to draw into something, which I guess this counts as something. Jono Khan with the Twitch Prime sub. Seven months now. Thanks, Jono Khan. I appreciate that. Hmm. Oh, wait. Right. Domri can add the third green. Rotten. Wait, that might be me. You gotta sit back, make them discard a card for a turn. Ooh, Underrealm Lich. That's interesting. Did you Yeah, Sky Nels, did you mean the did you mean the previous song? <laughs> yeah, I don't know where our hinge is. Uh That was not a very good pay for life. Um, no, they weren't dead. If they just, because they were at seven, I could only do five damage to them. They didn't pay for life. I didn't have lethal that turn. So what do we want to do? Still seem like a good Domri's Ambush matchup. That card looked awesome. All of our cards are pretty good, though. I guess Spellbreaker? Is that too small? We'll trim two Spellbreakers and get a Sunder Shaman. And an ambush in. Oh, 
a Discord channel, Zaxor? Yeah, yeah, we have a Discord to hang out. Yeah, we got a lot of people in the Discord. Definitely, yeah, D Discord's for everybody. If you have, um, you know, you don't have to be a, a sub. If you're, you know, if you like talking magic, join the Discord. Yeah, Storm's always in there. Storm's great. So yeah, yeah, Discord's for everybody. Lots of different rooms, you know, whether you like, you know, standard, historic, pioneer, modern, legacy, uh, draft. Um, you want to talk about the new Theros cards. There's, you know, basically a different channel for setup for everything. Um, you can talk about like FNM, like what, what are you bringing to FNM? What are you playing weekend tournaments? So the higher upside play is to play Incubation Druid and then ambush the Incubation Druid to kill the Innkeeper. Using Paradise Druid is the safer play. This is the higher upside just because then it has a counter on it and can add three mana. Because next turn I could go ambush, kill Innkeeper, and play Questing Beast next turn. Duress? Against Gruul? Bleh. Alright, well. Innkeeper gonna get us. <laughs> yeah, Anatran underrated. Yeah, it worked. It worked. I mean, I did, you know, I played, um, you know, Ambush or Planeswalker last game. They saw some spells. This would be the perfect time to draw the Great Henge. That card. As long as they don't kill Questing Beast, that is. Never mind. Would not be a perfect time to draw the Great Henge. I'd still take it. No, the adventure cards are were adventure decks were always much more powerful than a mass. It'll be interesting to see if if like like elementals were really strong. I don't know. I guess they were never really they were never as good still as adventure is though. In Innkeeper and Lucky Clover. You know, one mana really up up the power level of these cards. We had one questing beast and then just lands and a couple mana creatures. <laughs> yeah, this would be a pretty great crisis. But come on, the great hen.
guess I'll thin the deck some more. Opponents are showing off. I'm of course saving the Paradise Druid because if we do draw... We do draw a Great Henge. I'm going to want creatures to be able to play and draw cards immediately. I want to play Flame Sweep for, you know, just clearing out a whole bunch of Death Touch creatures and everything. I, I want to, but I'm not sure. I kind of wouldn't mind Kiora. I wouldn't mind Brontodon, kill, you know, trying to kill the, the Great Henge with the Brontodon, since they have the Great Henge also. I wouldn't mind Kiora as another thing that could draw some cards. A bunch of stuff I wouldn't mind. I don't really know how to fit everything in here. Could take out Domri's. The problem with Flame Sweep is also, of course, my mana creatures that it kills. So I'm just going to be firing off this Bone Crusher Giant, like, no matter what here. Whether they play something or not. So they can just play it again on, on turn three. They don't have a other three drop.
<laughs> this duress is getting me. Keep getting me with that duress. All right. Well, no, like, noxious grasp there. I was kind of scared of that. Yeah, submitting a deck? Yeah, um, you just have to... It's a good draw. The best thing is to put, uh, like, a link to the deck list. Um, and yeah, like, there's, yeah, there's the donate section below in Twitch. But yeah, you, you just have to... It's just, it's a $20 donation to to play a deck you just tell me whatever time slot you want they're basically they're all open to tell me what day what time slot and um and and that's about it you just have to send me a link to the deck and let me know let me know that uh, let's see there's the link for a new deck is that like a command? Maybe I should make that a command. Just the link to a, a new deck. So I have two tap lands here with the fabled with the rugged highlands and fabled passage. I'll put back one of those. I think I want incubation druid on two. Fabled passage will be tapped. We'll play spellbreaker. If we draw an untapped land, we could play Tomary. <laughs> nice sec building. Well, it minus because they're not able to kill the Domri with just the vampire or the dire moon. Oh, what? Can't finish the job. All right, shuffle that back. Shuffle all those cards, those good cards I just put down to the bottom. Let's shuffle those back. <laughs> A little pick me up before the real fun begins. No, no peace. Oh, let the blighters feel the ground. Yeah, new yeah, this is the new computer right now, Ren 4, and yeah, it's running really well. Very happy with it. Okay, that puts a counter on it. Oh no, they're they're putting in the vampire into play. Haunt of Hightower. Well then. That's a pretty good one. So I think we have to try to take out Soren so they can't just give the Haunt to the High Tower lifelink. Uh, 
Oh, this thing just has lifelink all the time. Never mind. Never mind. Well, this doesn't look great. Yes, yeah, so we'll just have to discard the questing beast. Right, I remember that thing I haven't watched like that one. That card's pretty good. So how do we kill those? We need more Domery's Ambush. I guess Chandra's. Yeah, Hanta Hightower. Looking good. I don't know if I need these Chandra's. The plan is like Ambush with Questing Beast or, or Vivian or Anarchobolas, any of those with like Questing Beast. Uh, the Cavalier of Thorns, of course, has Reach, which isn't bad. This thing eats stuff up. So basically, I'm just going to get this extra ambush in and I think cut a Chaos Bringer. No, I'm going to cut an Incubation Druid. <laughs> I guess I guess Domery Chaos Bringer kind of cost me that match, though. With that first minus that put all of those good quality cards down to the bottom. You know, like we put like Vivian and the Great Henge and all that kind of stuff down to the bottom. Guess I'm just flexing with the two life there. Didn't necessarily do that on purpose. What? They didn't attack? You call it anarchy. For me, Why won't they attack? My entire life. Explains a lot, actually. They, they have to just have like more like vampires and stuff, right? Like the 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 two, like, Bloodthirsty Aerialist or Pride Mates, like, they have more of those things that they didn't want me to block and didn't want to trade and didn't want that thing to die, right? And so that's why I kill that. Nothing disgusts me more than law and order. Ugh. 
Close your eyes. Breathe. And listen to the sounds of the Watch out. They bite. Do not defy aristocracy. I was raised by wolves, though so they might have also just been big dogs. Fable Passage. We'll just take this to get another land out of the deck. This will be fun to watch. Do they have some trick? Whoa, they do. So this Elise is gonna kill the Soren. Now if I wanna keep Vivian alive, I have to have my Cavalier block the Vampire of the Dire Moon. Let's get this questing beast. Now the Incubation Druid has a counter, so we can add a ton of mana also. Or it's also a 2-3, so we can take out a 2-2 Vampire of the Dire Moon. Alright, so we got that game. Those things are... These 1 mana, 1-1 one, one death touchers. I've been a little annoying. I'm going to play 1-6 mana Chandra instead of one of the 4 mana Domeries. Give me a little bit more removal in here. Yeah, the Abzan Bugler was pretty awesome. Yeah, not only went 5 0 with it, but it, yeah, it was just a fun deck to play and everything. Thanks, Bork. Yeah, this is also another fun one. Got, got a good, uh, got a good, um, list of decks for today.
I want to kill that thing before they untap and have the mana to activate it. Even though... Well, that's not great. I was going to say, even though a, a Soren wouldn't be great to, for me to see. Now I kind of wish I would have waited just a little bit. Alright, hopefully no, no removal spell with the four black mana here. No removal spell? Yay! Probably looking for white mana over there. They did not get back the Bloodthirsty Aerialist. Interesting. I thought for sure they were just getting back Bloodthirsty Aerialist. That's what that's what I would have done. We want to draw land, hopefully. Hmm. Now Incubation Druid will be able to have, like, it can add three mana so we can play Ravager Worm the next turn. Ravager Worm can eat this Knight of the Oven Legion. What are they at? 12? I guess I could have gone Spellbreaker, make it a 4 4, and then Arc Bow kill it also, and then hold back Ravager Worm. We finally drew the Great Henge. We finally did. Ah, uh, darn. We didn't get to, didn't get to play it. We finally drew it in, there we are, fifth game. Yeah, Candace, don't don't time people out like that. For 600 seconds, don't do that. How do I build a card collection? I've just been, I've been, this is like my, this is my full-time job. I've been playing every day, yeah, you know, for over a year here. And so, um, you know, just earning gold, buying packs, all that kind of stuff. So 
Esper. Cavalier. Yeah, I was I could have done the spellbreaker with haste and ambush and kill the bell haunt. I think I like saving Questing Beast for after a Wrath. It's definitely a real cost playing Cavalier of Thorns, you know, over and over again. Like, you know, the first couple don't matter, but if you're playing a really long match against Esper, you can't just sit back and play Cavaliers forever. I would have rather played the Greyhenge, but worried about counter magic, which is why I went with Cavalier. And I don't really mind if Cavalier gets killed in a sweeper as much, because we get something back. Um, which in this case, I think we want. See, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. Yeah, I'm just gonna grab a questing beast back. Maybe I should just play the great the ray hinge instead of that. Instead of that cavalier of the previous turn. Six. Probably just been too scared of a counter spell. This whole time.
Yeah, I guess with the Cavalier, yeah, I could have grabbed the land, and then I would have been able to go Spellbreaker, land, Great Henge previously. That would have been nice. Here I'm just planning on playing the Great Henge, because if it gets countered, then I can get it back with Cavalier, which I guess, which is what I really should have done the first time. I, I really should have led with Great Henge, because then if it gets countered, I'd, I'd have, like, the Cavalier that could bring it back, because it would be in my graveyard. The crueler the opponent, the sweeter the victory. I hope you said you better be one this time. Oops. All right. Let's get rid of these. Those. Let's get rid of those Domries. And the ambushes. Ambush was kind of nice against the Bell Haunt, though. One Arc Bow Ranger, one Ambush, one Cavalier, I guess the other Vivian. Mm. Let's see, I like all these. All right, I guess I'm just going to remove Ambush. Yeah, I guess Bone, Bone Crusher isn't necessarily the best. I mean, Bone Crusher does trigger Kiora, which is nice. <laughs> Take the six drop. No, I, I won't be Choco because it's on the Final Fantasy VII remakes on the PlayStation console. I don't have a PlayStation. I have a Switch. Is it? I guess is it for? Is it for PC also? Like, I guess if it's if it's a PC game, I guess I could play it here on the, on the. On the computer. I've never really played computer games besides you know like Magic: The Gathering Arena, but I've never really played like, like. Real computer games, I guess. I don't know how you'd call them. Okay, PS4 exclusive, yeah. Okay, so it'll be exclusive for like a year. That is a pretty cool Bone Crusher giant animation, the shadow. I liked saving. I went with the Bone Crusher instead of the Paradise Druid because I like saving the Paradise Druid for the Great Henge. But you know, now we're just playing it. Yeah, they kill it, but I still ramp. Barely ramp. 
Man, it's a lot of good stuff in the graveyard. Get him, Ceratops. I shouldn't be playing the incubation druid. I kind of want to. Uh, yeah, I want to uh, have them. I want to incentivize them playing a sweeper again, basically. Turns out having four Spellbreaker, four Ceratops, four Questing Beast. It's pretty good. But then also not just like relying on those, having a, a good game plan to grind as well. <laughs> yeah so i yeah jay gomez if you didn't know so the the whenever i played the cavalier they killed it immediately with the trigger on the stack so trying to get any of those cards back all they're going to do is go on top and then go back into the graveyard and so i didn't put anything back on top i know never even played the great hunge never have great hunge never Never casted. We got to draw it both times against the control deck. But we're never playing it. So I want to play the Chaos Bringer and probably Minus. I guess I'm supposed to plus. Because if I minus, they kill it with the Senate Guild Mage. This may be a... This may be an intro deck. <laughs> Gaining life is cheat. Um I uh, know I I no I haven't Joko. No, I I don't have any I don't have any other PC games. Um Go on, take a peek, you know like you do. All right, got the Domries. Thoughts on Rhythm of the Wild? I think it's just worse than Domri, basically. Yeah, I think that the, the Domri is a better card. Like this three mana Domri, and so like there's just not really reason to play it. More and more people are playing Enchantment Hate and stuff too. Uh -oh, you're gonna hurt when this is through. 
love to discuss me more than law and order. Rule smash. <laughs> My muscles may be small, but poor kitties. This worm, this worm is just so ravaged. Um, that song was The Devil Within by Digital Daggers. Forgot to update the. You gotta do the thumbnail for Is It Alliance. I didn't do that. Opponent. Well, I'm just getting the thumbnails for all the decks for today. All right, there we go. That's done. No, Azoria Circle is. Um, not Circle of Loyalty. Um. What's the name of that card? Verity Circle. There you go. That's the word. Verity Circle. Yeah. That's it. Verity Circle. It's basically a Gadwick Ver Verity Circle kind of combo deck where each time your opponent's creature becomes tapped and it's not attacking, you draw a card. So you just have like your Gadwick out, you cast the blue spell, you tap your opponent's creature, you draw a card. And you just kind of do that kind of stuff. Ooh, yeah, that Black Lotus, that looks nice. That sounds silly, yep. Yep, it is silly. All right, well, we're 4-0. We are now at the final boss. Here we go, it's final boss time. My final boss emotes. Here we go. <laughs> the Azorius Senate took too long approving of the second match. <laughs> they just couldn't make any decisions. Thanks, Tanub. 
Yeah, I'm pretty excited about the new computer. When Theros comes, yes. No, no sets are leaving whenever Theros comes. Um, every set that's in standard will still be in standard. We're just going to add Theros. Rotation only happens once a year, and it's in the fall. Basically, whenever, like whenever this set Throne of Eldraine was released, that's the one time a year. You know, September, October. That's the one time that sets leave standard. So right now, there's five sets in standard. Whenever Theros releases, then there'll be six. And then the next set, whatever that is, then there'll be seven. And then the core set will enter, and then there'll be eight. And then the set after that, then you'll have rotation. Yeah, so this it's always the set after the core set. That's a good, good call there. Good way to say it. Ooh, looks like Op is reanimating. The reanimation station. That's what the great. That's the new name for the graveyard. Is the reanimation station. Come and destroy. Come and destroy. It's probably my favorite animation on Arena, that Ravager Worm. That's so good. No, I, I was sending. I didn't eat Fibby. We sent Fibby to the reanimation station. That's what we were doing there. I mean, this is this is going to be the kind of matchup where either we're going to be smashing our opponent, or they're going to be reanimating a bunch of Agent of Treacheries and Dracu sets, and killing me with a bunch of Dracu sets. So I do kind of want an ambush to, to try to help take out Dracu Seth. Maybe that's not even worth it. That's probably worth it. I guess we probably just don't need the Great Henge in this matchup. We'll just take those the Great Henges out and play Chandra's instead. Yeah, do you know a theme? <laughs> you mean my childhood dog Fido just went to the reanimation station? Yes, that's what I meant. Ahead. 
I don't know. I guess I probably should just play the Chaos Bringer. I don't know. I didn't. I just didn't have like a great play for this turn. I, I certainly want to increase mana, but I guess just playing the Chaos Bringer increases mana also. So I probably should. I should just play this. Because then this could give. It's a cool beast token too. This could give um, the Bone Crusher Giant Haste. I will survive you. I'd get out of the way if I were you. Foolish coward. Mm, a quest of mystery. I feel like they're going to have Agent of Treachery steal my Arc Bar Ranger. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> Nothing like a bit of violence now and then. Will be fun to watch. All right, got to basically clear up their board, do some damage to them. What was the best god out of War of the Spark? I don't think War of the Spark had the gods. Oh, I guess. Oh, so you're talking. Okay. Oh, never mind. Okay, I know what you're talking about. Never mind. Um, sorry, sorry. I was just thinking the planes are, but yeah, no. You obviously, you mean like Ilharg, um, like Ronis, all of those cards. Um, I mean, I. Th how how do you want me to define best? How, how are we defining best here? Whatever happens next, it's gonna hurt you. You're fit enough to survive. Okay. So best is in like how good the card is. I mean, I really think o probably Oketra, honestly. But I know Oketra didn't see a ton of play just because of, of White's, White's like just White's power level. Besides Oketra, it did like whenever it kind of came out with like the Bant mid range decks with it and um. You know, with like Llanowar Elves ramping into it, like Llanowar Elf Paradise Druid. Kefnet was probably referred to as the most powerful to start with. What are they at? They're at 12. Uh, 12 is a lot of life. Yeah, I'll probably just say Oketra. Okay, 
Alive. Really hope they don't have another Agent of Treachery in hand. A third one. To take this Cavalier. And unclear if I'm actually supposed to be playing defense to protect the Planeswalkers for one turn or just attacking this turn still. I was just playing defense for one turn and then next turn. I'm not going to be so defensive. Yeah, me too, Frisky Biscuits. Well darn. Manipulation of the mind. How you play the hand you hold. Time. So we got 13 Trample. Of course, they're at 12. I have this thing also. So really, we have 15. Another agent of treachery. Stealing the 8 9. That's kind of unfortunate for them. Mm, I look forward to seeing you running away. Multiple ways to do this. We're fit enough to survive. We'll just go this route. I mean, I guess technically we're supposed to do this in case we hit, like, Questing Beast or another thing. I guess technically that's the thing to do with that. Another Haste creature, but yeah. All right, final boss defeated. Final boss defeated. No, the Cerebus doesn't change colors, no. 5-0. Gruel Henge. 2100 gold, 40 gems times two. Why'd I say 40? That's definitely 80. I <laughs> just like, saw the number 40. Uh, wrong deck. But there we go. There's Gruel Henge. We played Henge a total of zero times. So it was really critical to have the Great Henge in our deck. It was really a big reason why we were winning. <laughs> But no, Bone Crusher Giant was awesome. Um, the Planeswalkers were really good. You know, like, that's that's something about the Gruul decks that, like, a lot of people with the Gruul decks, they're just not playing the Planeswalkers. And just the Planeswalkers were really good. They they were. Uh, Cavalier Thorns was really nice, too, just helping us get more mana and, uh, you know, just being a, a good card advantage engine that's just a huge creature. Uh, you know, the Vivians were good. Glad we got a second one there. This is this is my preferred way to play Gruul. You know, other people, a lot of people, just play the creatures and just ignore the Domries and Vivians and stuff. But this is certainly my preferred way to to play Gruul. I like you know, increasing the resources with like Cavalier Thorns, ramping up to Ravager Worm. Like Ravager Worm looked really nice for us. And having all the like the Bone Crushers are, were, are just awesome. Like they need to be in the main deck. I'm glad we moved them to the main deck, and that freed up the sideboard slots for the Shifting Ceratops. Ceratops looked good against control. <laughs> so there we go. Gruel Henge. Yeah, it looks strong. Um, last couple matches, you know, we did we did have some easier matchups. We didn't have, like, the Tier 1 decks the last couple. But still, our deck looked good. Yeah, we did play the 1 of Ravager Worm a lot more than the 3 of Great, Great Henge. <laughs> that is true. But that happens. 
All right, anyway, those of y'all on YouTube, hope you enjoyed the updated version of the of Gruel Henge here. Hope y'all try it out. And of course, let me know how it goes if you are trying it out. Um, you know, let me know in the comments over there. Also hit that like button. I'd appreciate both of those. But thank you so much for watching some Gruel Henge, and I'll see you for the next video.